Bar Italia was opened in ni- the winter of 1949 by my grandparents, um, Lou and uh, Caterina Paledri. And um, it opened because of all the waiters and waitresses, well, mainly the waiters, not waitresses, who used to have uh, time on their hands after their shift and come there and socialise and meet and have coffee. Since 1949, its, it's, uh, it's doors have been open to everybody, but you've seen so many changes throughout the years. And, uh, I mean, I can only talk... I remember my father bringing me down as a little kid, but uh, in, the, in the 70s, it was like a scene out of Bronx Tale or... Uh, uh, Goodfellas, where you used to see all the Maltese standing across the road with their string vests on, and it was sleazy in the 70s Soho. It was sex shops instead of cafes. The 80s was the new romantic era. Things changed slightly. Um, Soho seemed to get colourful somehow or another, and then in the in the 90s, it just became uh, a 24-hour place. And Baritella set a trend, whereas it was my father's philosophy in business not to close the door until the last customer left. So Baritella was the first place to start trading all through the night. And uh, Rocky Machana became a friend of my father. He had a nightclub and he befriended uh, my father. And uh, he, uh, he loved my, my family's cooking. My grandmother was a good cook, my father's mother. And he used to come around to our house and uh, have specific food that he couldn't get in London, in the hotels in London. And he used to drink some homemade wine and then fall asleep in the back bedroom. And uh, unfortunately, when he died, his wife Barbara sent that over as a a thank you for his friendship in London, the poster. It's always been colourful. It's been a haven for many people, celebrities. It's been uh, the home for Italian football. It's where people can go and be kind of insignificant and it's a place that hasn't changed and you can see from the uh, fixtures and fittings although we've had to change certain things to comply with new rules and regulations but the floor is still original which was laid by um, my grandparents uh, in 1949 and there's certain aspects that never change about Baritella so you can go anywhere in the world and everything changes uh, but Baritella stays the same. And um, then I just felt when I left school at 16, it was my duty, it's what I wanted to do. And I got stuck in quite hard with my brother Luigi. And uh, it's just been a family business. And we, we, we love Soho, we love being in Twitter Street. And uh, it just seemed uh, a natural um, progression that we wanted to carry on trading in this street. And we bought this place literally and, and did what we thought we could do best which was run restaurants and cafes meet people and greet people and this has taken off with an um, uh, you know great success once again we we saw that you know there was business to do at night and i think that you know literally now sets a trend where you can eat and last orders in the kitchen is four o'clock in the morning for a full proper meal and not just a you know microwave meal but a full proper meal that you could have at midday and uh, that, that's one of the keys to our success and you know, having a, uh, a music and dance license and trading with alcohol till three in the morning. As far as businesses go, um, yeah, there's a handful of, of businesses left and Miss Angelucci's been serving us coffee for 60 years. Um, Patisserie Valerie, The French House, Maison Beto, Camisa, Lina Stores, they're, they're all, they're, I think they're all family businesses. Unfortunately, with uh, the growing rent and rates and uh, uh, supermarkets doing damage to people and the parking and certain situations, uh, these, these businesses are a dying breed and uh, it's getting harder and harder to survive.